Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we have a bombshell update that Donald Trump broke his silence on the Bud Light boycott and is up big in the polls against sleepy Joe Biden. So you know the boycott's working when even the former president of the United States is weighing in on the discussion. As we can see here, Donald Trump took to his platform on Truth Social to break the news and he says, quote, it's time to beat the radical left at their own game. He is referring to the cancel culture, say something you disagree with and try and cancel either that person or their product. And in this case, obviously we're talking about Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light to which he says, quote, money does talk. Anheuser-Busch now understands that. Now, before we applaud Trump, which you know, if you've been following the channel, I am a big fan of Donald Trump and I hope we get him reelected back into the White House in 2024, I did want to highlight that this may be a slight conflict of interest for Donald Trump. According to public filings, it does say here the disclosure form, which is on file with the Federal Election Commission, shows a twice impeached former president. I love how they have to add that in there. If you wanted any further proof or clarification that the media is biased, there you have it. But it says he owns between $1 and $5 million in Anheuser-Busch InBev stock under the account listed as DJT Trust. In addition to Trump owning AB InBev stock, which again, he might have sold by now or has just been holding for years, years and years and years, uh, you know, and just believes in the company overall, which again now is clearly bad for business. But you can see too that Donald Trump Jr. has previously called for an end to the boycott. This was a New York Post article from April 14th. So you can see there is definitely some family conflict of interest. That's probably why they haven't been beating this drum harder, quite honestly, because this is the most successful boycott in history. But still, it's a major positive sign moving forward for not only the boycott, but for how things stand in the United States. And I would argue too, and I don't think this is controversial at all, at least to my audience, that Donald Trump speaking out against this uh, partnership with Dylan Mulvaney and sort of the trans movement itself, where there's women being competed against by men now in their own sports, it's obviously a greater issue at hand, much more than just Bud Light which I have covered extensively. So let's take a look at this clip from Donald Trump in a recent interview about his thoughts on the trans movement and about men competing in women's sports. Is a trans woman a woman? So look, when I see uh, men participating in women's sports, when I see records being broken, like you say, the big event with the cyclists, yeah. uh, and pretty easily, pretty easy victory from what I understand, uh, I think it's very unfair. I think it's very disrespectful, actually, to women. I talk about it all the time. I don't do it for applause, but I will say one of the biggest hands I get is when I say we will not allow men to compete in women's sports. Weightlifting, swimming, running, it's so unfair. I think it's totally disrespect, And the records are being broken, like, sometimes by a lot. And I think it's a very bad thing. Here's a clip of Trump talking about the movement again. In this case, you can see the applause and the audience roar. Uh, do you think, does anybody really believe what's going on in this country? I will sign a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. One thing we really need more of in this country is to be able to express yourself freely and plainly and that's what Donald Trump does so well. Listen to this hilarious clip of him in a leaked video from a deposition from E. Jean Carroll's rape case in New York. You said in that video that Ms. Leeds would not be your first choice. You were referring to her physical looks, correct? Just the overall, not, I, I look at her, I see her, I hear what she says, whatever. You wouldn't be a choice of mine either, to be honest with you. I hope you're not insulted. I would not. <laughs> under any circumstances have any interest in you. <laughs> I'm being, I'm honest when I say it. Uh, she, I would not have any interest in. As we can see from the headline of Breitbart, he has a seven point lead over Biden in the 2024 race. Now we can look at the actual interactive polling numbers. Again, Trump, despite lawsuits, despite slander and attacks thrown against him, despite being deplatformed on almost every relevant social media application. And please come back to Twitter, Trump, if you can, which you probably can't because of the conflict of interest with Truth Social. But 
he keeps winning. He keeps surging in the polls. And it just makes me question why you wouldn't vote for Donald Trump. And let me know what your thoughts are. And let's get some discussion going here in the comments if he is your first choice for 2024. Now, I get some hesitancy with Trump because he didn't, quote, put in enough policy or drain the swamp enough, clean house enough, fire enough people to really make those monumental shifts uh, in his first kick of the can. But I certainly think he deserves a second one, more so now than ever, because, again, the border is wide open. You have these insane clips, which we'll play here in a second, of tons of migrants just lining up, ready to cross over. Joe Biden, of course, says, come on in. You know, we'll take everybody, even though it's creating an insane change of community for the U.S. And as we look at the clip, that could create stark consequences for just about every one of us. So, you know, you have these issues that Joe Biden doesn't want to go near, obviously, and his handlers, more importantly, that are actually in control. You have these things going on in this country that we are just deteriorating as a nation. We're deteriorating as a culture. We have no more nuclear family values and these good things that we work so hard to ensure for future generations. It's a good thing that Trump's surging in the polls, but it by no means ensures that he'll win the election, as we saw a pretty shocking result. And then I'll say that I'll leave it at that in 2020 with Joe Biden. But I wanted to highlight this tweet from one of the White House reporters, Simon Atiba, who's been really pressed his nose to these issues that face the U.S. He says, since I'm receiving some crazy attacks in my DM because of the last video I shared, this is what I think about race relations these days. Again, another issue that the Democrats and the liberal left are trying so hard to make seem like everyone is racist and we're horrible people, this, that, and the other. He's just speaking out against it. He says, I believe the mainstream media is attempting to create a false narrative ahead of the 2024 elections. I couldn't agree anymore. He goes on to say, this narrative suggests that whites are against minorities and that the country should resist them. The media portrays racism as being solely prevalent on the right side of the political spectrum. However, this is not true. Racism and other forms of evil are not confined to any particular group. And most people simply want to live their lives and contribute to society. That's exactly what we're doing here on this YouTube channel. I just want to speak out for what I believe in. Yet, we are all being penalized for that. That's why the success of the Bud Light boycott is so encouraging. And it's no wonder that a lot of Americans think those horrible things because look who's telling them that. Look at this tweet from the Wall Street Journal. Again, for my audio viewers, you're going to want to see this. This is horrifying. They say authorities looking into the motive for the mass shooting at a Texas mall on Saturday are investigating the gunman's possible links to white supremacy ideology. Now, obviously, if you've been following the news by now, the person responsible for that has been identified as Marcio Garcia, a Hispanic person. So again, you know, when you have this reckless and quite frankly dangerous reporting by the Wall Street Journal, which you can't even really call it that anymore, this just creates further division in the country. And again, this is why I'm so proud of this community on YouTube, this people, boy, you know, boycotting Bud Light, and especially for Donald Trump standing up and just speaking out against this. Of course, with that being said, it's one thing to speak about it and another thing to enact change about it. I want to highlight this clip from Tim Pool, who I've listened to for years and years, well before I got into the YouTube game. Obviously, that just happened just over a month ago. So thank you to every one of you loyal viewers and patriots that comment in the chat and everything else. But listen to his stance on why he's voting for Trump. You know, so um, what do I like about Trump? The reason I'd vote for him, not because I think he's the greatest leader we've ever had. I think his foreign policy has been absolutely fantastic, considering the presidents we've had in the past. Obama, like, blown up kids, like Abdul Rahman al a 16-year-old American citizen we murdered. Anyway, uh, Donald Trump's going to fire everybody. He wants revenge. And I think if the one thing I can get out of the next presidency is the purging of the, of the bureaucratic class, this country will be better off for it. I don't know if Ron DeSantis would do that. I think he's a negotiator. I think he's going to go in and say, how can we make this clean? And, th and it's going to be like Trump's first term all over again. They're going to attack him. They're going to smear him. They're going to lie. They're going to get their key positioned people to, to sludge everything up. I think at this point with Donald Trump, he's, he's unleashed. He's so angry. He's been slighted. He's been lied about. They've impeached him. They're trying to criminally uh, prosecute. They're, they're, they're prosecuting him in, in New York. They're trying to get him in D.C. They're trying to get him in Georgia. Now they're accusing him of a 30-year-old rape case. I mean, these people are relentless. And almost every single time these stories turn out to be fake or even worse, it's them. I mean, the Alpha Bank Russia stuff was a lie. Trump being a Soviet asset. Jonathan Chait, congratulations. That was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard on cable TV. All of it a lie. Ukraine Gate, Joe Biden saying, if you don't fire the prosecutor, you're not getting a billion dollars, which he admitted to at a CFR <laughs> meeting. 
everything they say about Trump turns out to be a mi mis misconstrued. I think Trump gets elected. He walks in and says, I don't care how. I don't care uh, uh, why. We are going to terminate these people. We're going to send them out with nice little boxes full of their belongings, and we're going to, we're going to figure out how to do it. He wants Schedule F. That's the number one thing this country needs right now. I don't think DeSantis does it. He's absolutely bang on, nail on the head, word for word, agree 100% with him. And I'm not a Ron DeSantis hater, a sanctimonious hater. I just think that Trump has this fury in him and that he looks better than ever. He's mentally sharper than ever. And the reason I stopped making videos so much on Joe Biden is because he has nothing to offer. He's not even the guy in charge. And that is just my opinion. I don't think that's a controversial statement, uh, but he has literally nothing to offer. And t Schedule F, for anybody that doesn't know, Tim Pool is referring to this, it is the purpose of the provision was to increase the president's control over the federal career civil service. So basically the, the people that have been civil servants, aka enriching all of their family members, friends, corruption, selling the country out, a myriad of things, negative things. He wants to get rid of these leeches in Washington, D.C., and I fully, fully, fully support that. I do think a lot of those subjects warrant their own video, which we can do in the future, but I wanted to kind of get everything out there that I am thinking about the state of the country and not only the Bud Light boycott and Donald Trump finally breaking his silence on that, even though he may have a conflict of interest, I think this stems well beyond just the Bud Light boycott. It's the USA that is being attacked internally by leeches, by parasites in DC, corrupt bureaucratic politicians. And Donald Trump, I am so eagerly awaiting to support him in 2024 because I believe in his vision for our country. Let me know if you agree in the comments. And once again, thank you personally to each and everybody that has subscribed and supported this channel so far. Until the next video, my friends, be well and take care.